My name is Josh Gray. I get the privilege of being the lead servant at this amazing church called Real Life on the Palouse, and I'm honored to be here with you guys today. Uh, hello to those of you joining us online. I'm uh, glad you could be part of our family. Thanks for being here. I knew what I was going to talk about today in August of 2022. I was at a conference in uh, Denver, Colorado, and it was an uh, uh, Infusion Bible conference, and it was two days. There was four experts, and they, ta- they did 15-minute talks in a row. And then they did ten, each one did 10 of those. And it was like, like drinking through a fire hose. And so uh, the, one of the very last co- talks was Dr. Randy Smith. And he had this talk about uh, heaven and about what does it look like, the fact that we do have a home. So I'm just going to play that for you guys and I'll just sit down. No. Uh, it impacted me so much on my notes. What I wrote was Easter 2023. Sermon done. Now I've had to do a little work on it since then. Um, But I hope to be able to share that with you. So we talk about welcome home. And uh, many people throughout the world are looking for a home. Whether it's someone fleeing from a place where home is just not even possible. Refugees by the tens of thousands trying to get out of war-torn places. Or maybe you just recently moved to Moscow and you're like, I'm looking for a home. And wow, a lot of options. And so when you think about home, you know, home can be a physical place and a good home is important. You ever walked into a place and you're like, I'm home. This is home to me. And not necessarily your house, but it felt like home. That happened to Carrie and I when we uh, came here and interviewed in July of 2012. We were over at Schweitzer Engineering Laboratory there where they, uh, we had our church services and their big event center. And her and I were walking out our home and everything we owned and all of our stuff and our kids, I think, were back in Montana. But we were walking out and we're walking down those steps and I was like, we're home. Carrie looked at, we looked at each other, we're like, this is home. This is where we're supposed to be. And so when you think about homes, I've lived in about 14 different homes. Three houses that I, me and the bank tried to own together. Um... Uh, a double wide. When I moved here, uh, I had an awesome uh, 35 foot motorhome that my dad let me use. And I got to live in that. It was beautiful. 1985, uh, Itasca motorhome. And so I lived out at Robinson Park and I had to move every 14 days because they didn't want me to stay there that long. Um, and so I was out there and then I was, I was getting water from my, the motorhome I was in and I had the hose connected up and I was dragging it over to this other guy and I was telling him what I was doing. And he happened to be a Christian guy. And he's like, well, I have a home you can have and live in while you're looking for your home. So you don't have to bring your family into this RV. Uh, five of us in the motorhome might have been tight. Um, and so he's like, yeah, we're going to tear it down when we're done. You might want to bug bomb it. And then when you go to the master bathroom, there's a hole in the floor. So just kind of do one of those things. And so we lived in that home for a little bit. And, you know, the trailer wasn't the first trailer that I actually lived in. I think I lived in a 22-foot wilderness travel trailer with my dad and my uh, stepmom. And it was a glorious 192 square feet for the three of us, wasn't it? I mean, we had tons of space uh, for that. And you could choose how you're going to sleep. Are you going to sleep on your stomach or on your back? Because you couldn't roll over, you know, once you had the thing that pulled the bed down. But since the beginning of time, uh, humankind has been looking for something called a home. And home can be physical. But also as Christians, we look forward to this thing of an eternal home. A home that won't be blown away or destroyed by man or destroyed by war. And so today I'm going to invite you guys to consider a new kind of home. In Psalm 90, it's a prayer from, of Moses to the man of God. He says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born... Or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. God is a dwelling place. So today we celebrate this high holy day of the church. It's the biggest day for us as Christians. And it's uh, it's, it's the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The anointed one, the Messiah, the promised one that the world is waiting for. And here's how I picture it. Have you ever watched those military videos where they're either surprising or the military person is coming home? And you'll see the little like eight-year-old girl see her dad and just run. Doesn't matter what's going on. There's nothing that could separate him. And they run and she just leaps and jumps into the arms of the soldier. And she's crying and the soldier's crying like a baby. I picture that for all of us 
when we go to our eternal home. That there's, Jesus is like, here I am. And everything that you've ever wrestled with or struggled with or you're ashamed of or all of those things that have been weighing you down, you jump into the arms and they are evicted off of your soul. You are as free as you've ever been before in your life. You are as deeply loved as you can possibly imagine because you are home. So welcome back. Welcome back to your future and to your now. See, on Good Friday, sin was defeated. Today, death is defeated. And not just for Jesus the Christ on the cross, but he defeated death for eternity for all of us. Anybody could say amen to that. Anybody who wanted to. That's right. So in this highest holy day for Christ followers, there's this remembrance of Jesus conquering death of this world and providing a way out of eternity or into eternity forever with our creator. We have a home. We have a future that extends beyond the breaths that we get to breathe here on this earth. And there's no amount of suffering that can take this home away from you for those that are following Jesus. Because we have a savior, we have a home. Well, how do you know this? How can you be sure that we have a home? Well, there's this thing called faith. And you have to, at some point, you have, we all have faith in everything, right? We have faith in gravity. But we have faith. And we have faith that we had a Savior that he actually went to prepare a home for us. Check this out in, in John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Why were their hearts troubled? Well, because this world has lots of trouble, amen? Lots of things are going on that we're wondering about. Oh, the economy and interest rates and blah, 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 all these things. Don't be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, Jesus says. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have not told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to where I am going. So this home is not a secret place that you gotta like unlock a code to try and figure out you know the way to get home. And since you have a roadmap and you know the way to get home, you are free to invite other people to this home, but I wonder if there's going to be enough room. You know, we live in a land of scarcity, right? How many, how many cases of toilet paper do you have? <laughs> right? But like this place will have unlimited toilet paper. I don't even know if we'll have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but if we did, it would have two-ply, Charmin, extra soft, the best toilet paper ever. But you see, you have a home. You have an eternal home. And this builder is excellent. It will pass inspection. And you know how to get there. So here's what happened. Here's how he went to go prepare this home for us. Jesus uh, is crucified. And he dies on, he's crucified at nine o'clock and he lets his last breath go at 12 o'clock and they rush to get him into the tomb and they get him into the tomb and then they roll this big stone there and they can't prepare his body because Sabbath is Saturday. So Friday, he will die and within three days he will rise, right? So Friday he, he, he passes, Saturday they can't do anything because it's Sabbath. And so uh, Sunday morning they run to this uh, tomb because they need to take care of this body because it's a dead body in their minds. And here's what they find. On the first day of the week, uh, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered it, they did not find the body of Lord Jesus. It wasn't there. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Don't, don't you remember? Remember how he told you 
while he was still with you in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered over into the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Now, when they came back uh, from the tomb, they were told all, the, told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. It was Mary of Magdalene, uh, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense. Like, yeah, it would be nonsense. We saw him crucified. We saw him, we saw him go into the tomb. We saw him roll this giant stone in there. Like, you're crazy. But... Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, and bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering what had happened. He wasn't there. That's why we're here today. That's why we're celebrating this thing called the resurrection that changed the course of history. We're sitting here talking about it 2,000 years later. Thousands and millions of people all over the world today are remembering this event that happened that's recorded not just in the Bible, but there's other recordings of things that happened on that particular day. And we're still remembering it today. Now, fast forward, uh, John is, uh, is on the island of Patmos and he's, this book of Revelation starts to come to him. And this is where we're gonna learn about what is this home gonna be like? And so there's some different pieces. First time he's entering, uh, entering into this idea of what this home looks like, they're worshiping. In Revelation chapter four, and they're worshiping, and uh, Jesus says, uh, come, come up here and I'll show you what must take place after this. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. So in chapter five, there's a scroll there and everybody's kind of sad and John actually weeps because there's this really cool scroll there and they can't figure out, like nobody can unlock the scroll and then the lamb of God comes and the scroll is able to be unlocked. And here's uh, what they say is that you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Every single human being in here was purchased. Was purchased by his blood. Was purchased thousands of years ago. And why were you per purchased? You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God and they will reign on earth. See, this idea of heaven and this place that's either up or down or wherever you think it is, this idea uh, of heaven and experiencing God, you can start that experience now. You can start dwelling with God and having him in your life right now. Some of you already have done that. And he dwells within your spirit. You said some prayer and you got baptized and you believed that Jesus was who he was and now you're trying to dwell with God and you're walking uh, on this earth and you understand the invitation. Maybe you understand how cool this new home is. And so God is with us. And then it says, then I looked and I heard the voices of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne of the living creatures uh, and the elders and in a loud voice saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive the power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. So he's going there to prepare a place for you and I. And we're going to learn a little bit more about this place if we fast forward to Revelation chapter 21. And it's so cool, the intentionality that God has for you. Check this out. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, or coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. This thing is radiant. You have <gasps> breathless. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. He will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. 
He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the alpha. I am the omega, the beginning and the end to the thirsty. I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all of this and I will be their God and they will be my children. So what do we know about this eternity? Well, here's what we know. It's a prepared place. It's different from anything that we know. It's this holy city, this new Jerusalem coming down from out of heaven and from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. This has got the creator who created all the cool things that you can see. When you see a sunset that takes your breath away, When you see a a picturesque moment in your life, like he's like, that creator went and prepared this place for you and I. It's a shared place, Revelation 21, three. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and he will be their God. It's a comforting place. I feel like I need to go into my Josh Gray sales mode. I'm trying to sell you this home of how cool this is. Now, this home has got a lot of features. It's got a lot of benefits. And I think I'm going to be able to close the deal on you guys on this home. At this moment right here. This is my highlight of this cool home. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. So what's not going to be there? Let me tell you some things that are not going to be in this home. Cancer will not be in this home. War will not be in this home. You won't need band-aids or first aid kits because you're not going to fall down and get a little boo-boo. Some of you, I've got some sad news for you. There'll be no political debates in this home. Oh, well. Oh, well then. No social anxiety, no depression, no worry, no fear, no pride. You won't even need any tissues because there's no crying. You won't need hospitals. You won't need medicine. You need all the candy you want. Cavities won't be existing. There'll be be no tragic car wrecks. There'll be no jealousy. There'll be no temptation. There's not going to be any suicide. No eating disorders. No school shootings. No bullying. You'll never be hungry or thirsty. No bills. Everything's paid for. No credit cards, no theological debates. We'll have, he'll have squared that all away for us. No denominations, no guilt. Can you imagine never going to a funeral ever again for all of eternity? No regret, no need to apologize, no sad songs, fights or drugs or idolatry. You won't be bored. You won't be discontent. You won't have any scars. There'll be no shame. There'll be no loneliness. There'll be no sin. Are you interested? Well, for 1995. No, nope. This has already been paid for. It's been bought and paid for and prepared for you with intentionality, great intentionality. It's a free place. Revelation 21, six says, he said to me, it is done. I am the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. It's a place for family. Those who are victorious will inherit all this and I will be their God and they will be my children. It's bright and beautiful and huge. Revelation 21, 11, it is shown with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, 
like a, like a jasper, clear as crystal. You're going to be in awe of this. It's a complete place. There's nothing lacking. It is totally finished. Nothing's decaying. And finally, it's a promised place for those who are in Christ Jesus. Revelation 22, 6. The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent his angels to show his servants the things that must soon take place. So welcome home. This home is big enough that you could even, if you wanted to, invite everybody you know to it. How about going out there and getting rejected for Jesus a couple times this year? How about somebody, you go to talk to somebody and you're sharing what God has done in your life and they're just like, get out of here, I don't want to hear it. What if you're like one of the 25 people that need to do that to reach a kid like me? Okay. Like you're, you're going to even still live through that most likely. So this home, there is, there's plenty, if you love like a certain type of like cake or whatever, it would never run out. This home is expansive. We can, and God actually has a plan to fill up this home. You know what his plan is? His son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross, rising again, and empowering you as a kingdom of priests to go out into all of the world and share this great news, this gospel news. That you don't have to have your last breath and die here on this earth and rot and decay. You can go into eternity. And the adoption into this eternity is now. It's not just a get out of hell free card. It's not just a ticket to heaven. It starts in surf fest. It starts tomorrow. It starts with your hands and feet as we go out of these walls, loving on people, representing who our God is. Or you can continue your separation or your passivity with God. And you can be a fan of, of Jesus and like him on Facebook and like the things he says, but not let it transform your heart. And I think that Jesus is in the transformation business. And he wants to transform the hearts and minds of everyone in here. And he wants to transform the hearts and minds of people that you know. For their better, for their purpose, to give them a home like this. Before we go to communion, I want to share with you this great news. And we're going to have people that are available to pray with you. And if you're here today and this is your time, don't let this moment pass you by. You can start your journey today now. Maybe you have to recommit. Maybe you got off the track. Maybe uh, you need to get back on the path. But today is your day. Welcome home. Romans 10, 9, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you're going to be saved. And you're not just saved from something, you're saved for a purpose. God has a plan for you. And it's a good plan. It's a great plan. It's not an easy plan, but it is a great plan and it is completely fulfilling. We're not just participants in this world spinning around just for funsies. God has a specific plan for you. And so maybe it's your day. If it is, come up after service and we'll pray with you. We get the privilege of celebrating communion every week at our church. If you didn't grab one of these on your way in, uh, I got Roger, we got uh, different folks, and raise your hand and we'll get you communion. And here's the only rule on it. If you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then it's going to mean something to you. And if you haven't, then it's just a, a crummy cracker and some juice. Now, these are new communion cups. I stumbled and fumbled through this in the first service. Uh, you have to lift up this foil this time. Uh, but as we do this, I want to, to lead us in directed prayer as we come uh, to the Father in communion, and we remember what happened. So, Lord, I just thank you for this time. I ask that you would just be working in this room. You are working in this room. I don't even have to ask it, because these are your people who you love and who you care about. Lord, I ask you would just move into their hearts. And maybe they're wondering, maybe they got lots of questions about stuff, and they're not sure, and they've seen horrible things in their life, and they're trying to figure out how there could be a God when this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and Yes. Yes, all those things happened. And that's not what you intended. But you're showing us what your intention is. 
And you showed us how important this intention is to you by the very sacrificing of Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. The way he chooses to bring kingdom into this earth, not by military might, not by domination, but through love and compassion and grace and mercy. So Father, we come to you. We come to you on this day to celebrate and to realize we are not alone and we are welcome home. So the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he uh, took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Today, we remember you. Thank you for giving us a home. And the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this uh, cup uh, is a new covenant. It is in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it and do it in remembrance of me. Let's remember what he did for us. Father, you are so good. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for a chance to worship. Thank you for preparing this home. Man, I, I, I can't wait to be at home with you. But I want to be participating now. I want to be part of the plan, one person at a time. As we introduce them to what life could be like in a home with you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for home.